This is the first of four videos that I am putting together that show how to completely disassemble a Smith & Wesson third generation handgun. Uh, the gun here happens to be a, a model 4006, but the procedure is the same on, uh, on any of their third generation pistols. Uh, the, the only real difference is if, you're, if you've got a double action only gun or a SIG style decocking gun, the, the takedown procedure is slightly different, but for the most part, everything can be accomplished uh, by just taking down a standard Walther style safety uh, pistol. Uh, the uh, over the last uh, couple of years, I've had a lot of friends and colleagues ask uh, just how to do this or how to do that. It's very difficult to explain, but if you see it on video, uh, it makes it so much easier. And this is something that can be done with just uh, common tools, nothing special, no real, uh, no real surprises. Once you watch the video, I'm sure when I'm done here, you'll see it's something that you would probably be comfortable doing at home. Uh, the first thing. In this video, we're going to start with is, the, is uh, disassembling the frame. Now, I've already removed the slide and the barrel uh, from the gun. I'm not going to do a video on how to how to accomplish that. If you cannot do that comfortably, then you definitely don't need to uh, go any further uh, in trying to disassemble the gun. Uh, now that we have just the frame here with uh, the grip, uh, is most of you guys already know. All you got to do is punch this pin out. And uh, just like that, pulled out the uh, the grip pin. We'll set that aside. And the best way to get the grip off is make sure the hammer is at rest. You don't want it cocked back. If it's cocked back, there's much more spring tension on the grip, making it harder to get off. So pull the trigger. Make sure the hammer is forward. Turn the gun upside down, place your left index finger in the magazine well, kind of holding it down on the table, and then grab your other, using your other thumb, grab the heel of the grip right here and push down and pull outward at the same time. Uh, you have to use a pretty good amount of force sometimes, but as you can see, that one slid right out nice and easy. And then just take your fingers and pry open the sides of the grip. Just to open it up a little bit more, just like that, the grip is off, hammer spring and cup is off, and now we are ready to go into the good stuff here where we remove all of the pieces on the frame. Easy. First thing we're going to do is remove the magazine catch nut and the magazine release lever that gets pushed out of the way to release the magazine. What you have to do to make that easy is get a wadded up piece of uh, paper towel or rag of some type and set it underneath that area of the gun that'll help push up the magazine release to keep it from uh, depressing when we try to unscrew the catch nut. First thing you do is get a punch, hold down the plunger firmly. You gotta be careful not to slip here and then you should be able to turn the magazine catch nut here. Let's see if I can get it going. Yep, I got it turning. You got to be careful though. On, in my right hand, I'm applying very good pressure so that this plunger doesn't go flying on me. Now, when I get the nut off, keep your fingers over that area and then slowly release that plunger so it doesn't go flying. If it goes flying, you'll probably never find it. Uh, so there's the, uh, the catch nut. Get a pair of tweezers. Grab that plunger. Inside that is a spring. And get that. And then the next thing is the magazine catch, which is on the other side there. So we got those out of the way. Next, we're going to remove the side plate assembly. And with that is going to come out the hammer, the ejector, the decocking pawl, and also the uh, safety firing pin safety pawl. So all we have to do is go to the other side of the gun. These two pins are what hold the side plate in place along with the sear. So we're just going to push, get it started. Here you can see the side plate is almost halfway out. Just go ahead and pull it all the way out. There's the sear, the side plate, and one pin. Turn the gun upside down and you got the hammer. You've also got 
these levers that need to come out. Also the two springs. Got to remember these springs are in there. It's easy to forget that they're there, then you lose them later while you're working with the gun. Uh, and then there is the disconnector that comes out. So all of that is out. You got three levers, two springs. This gun has has three levers. The double action only guns or the SIG style decocking guns only have two levers. But they all have the disconnector and then the same sear and hammer. Now we're going to remove the trigger group along with the drawbar. Very simple, just set the gun on a block, or if you don't have a block like this, uh, just a hole somewhere on a bench where the pin will have room to get pushed through. Uh, we're just going to take a brass punch so we don't scratch the surface of the gun. And just tap it, get it started. Don't pull the brass punch out. You want to leave it in place of the pin. You can see what's happened is the pin is pushed all the way through so it's out. But I don't want to pull that brass pin out until I reach in with my other hand and take the I'm, I'm pushing on the draw bar to relieve the pressure off of the brass punch now I can pull the brass punch out while I'm still holding the draw bar tight I just slowly release the pressure it's going to slide out of the back of the gun we want to do it slowly so it doesn't scratch the underneath of the grip here so there's the draw bar and then inside here is going to be the spring the trigger return spring, I think you can see it right there. That comes out. And then the trigger, the way the trigger comes out is reach inside the trigger guard and push up on the trigger towards the front or towards the muzzle end of the gun. And you can see where it comes out. That's the only way it goes in and out. A lot of guys are trying to get this trigger to go in through the back here. It only goes in and out one way. Right through there, then reach up here and just go ahead and pull it on through. And you got your trigger. And now the frame is completely disassembled except for this flat black spring on the back here. This is what applies pressure to the sear. Uh, there's no need to ever take that out or re replace it unless it's rusted. Uh, that part should last the life of the gun. But if you did need to take it out, it's very easy. You just punch using the correct size punch. Just punch that pin out. Then that, that black spring plate comes right out. You can clean it further, polish it if you wanted to, and then reinstall it just by replacing the pin. Very easy, but I, I never have to do that on these guns. They're always in pretty good shape. Uh, every now and then you'll find one that's rusted. But uh, normally it just cleans up with croil. And while the gun is disassembled, the, on the frame here, this recessed channel here where the spring and plunger go, and along with the, uh, where the uh, magazine catch uh, home is right here, those tend to get the dirtiest. There's always a lot of lint and dirt in there. What you need to do is, is drop some drops of uh, hops number nine in there or something, let it sit overnight, and then agitate it with a punch like I'm doing. And then, uh, you know, use an aerosol cleaner of some type to get it out. Uh, you'd be surprised how much stuff can uh, reside in that hole, especially on, on these older guns that have been used as duty uh, sidearms. So that's it for uh, disassembling the frame.